So TFCon is the first convention I've ever been to. There was one year where I was going to go to E for Everyone, when I think I was 13 or so if I remember correctly, but there was a glitch on the website that told us that the convention was cancelled, even though it wasn't, so we never bought the tickets and as a result, last weekend was the first one I've ever attended. And I just feel like I completely mucked it up. I walked out of that convention feeling shame and frustration at my own stupidity. For starters, you're going to notice in this episode that I have literally no pictures or video of the event, despite being a guy who ostensibly films stuff for a living. My family has never taken photos or filmed anything. We just don't do that. Not because we think it's wrong or anything, it's just not a single one of our instincts. We simply never think about it. So I took one picture at TFCon and it was just of the MMC Combaticons. Whoops, my reaction to my first convention ever was completely undocumented because whipping out the camera that I always have with me just isn't a habit I have. But that's the least of my concerns. Though I do want to tell those of you I took pictures with that I fully consent to you posting those wherever you want, whenever you want. But that brings me to meeting my fans in person for the first time ever, and I feel like I colossally screwed that up. Do you have any idea how sad it makes me that the first fan I ever met in person I accidentally yelled at? Yeah, okay, so what happened there is, when I first arrived, there were these bins of assorted Transformers parts that I was digging through to assemble an original Beast Wars Waspinator. I'd gotten quite possibly the only one that could come close to being finished 90% of the way together, and I set it down to look for the last part that I needed, at which point some guy walked up, saw the Waspinator, and went, ooh, grabbed it, and started walking off with it. I responded by going, hey, that's mine! Dude turned around to me with a look on his face like a deer caught in the headlights. He didn't really move to hand it back because I think he was too confused, so I grabbed the figure and I didn't yank it out of his hands, I just slowly pulled it. He stared at me for a second and went, Wait, are you perspective end? And inside, I just started screaming. No! No, this can't be the way I meet my first fan ever! Why? Why did I yell? Why did I have no chill? Oh, this is horrible! I've embarrassed my fan! I acted like an ass! God, why? I've talked to him since in the comments of my videos, so I already had the chance to apologize to him, but even still, man, I'm so sorry. Then there's a second person I wanted to apologize to. Yes, there are two people I felt I handled meeting so badly that I feel guilty enough to want you all to know. To the guy with the dreadlocks, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, I didn't ask how you were doing, I don't even think I shook your hand. I took a picture with you where I made a stupid face because I don't know how to take pictures, like I established at the start, it's not a skill that I've developed in my entire lifetime, and then my brother started mocking me for making a stupid face, and I started arguing with him, and when I turned back around, you were gone, and I became I'm horribly worried that we had made you uncomfortable. I wish I got your name. I wish I talked to you more. And honestly, I wish I'd talked to everyone I met more. As my first time meeting fans, I didn't know what to do or what to say, and I didn't want to eat up all your valuable times at this convention. It was your time. I wasn't in position to you. If I'm standing there not being entertaining or having anything to say, then I'm wasting your time. I know that sitting here and thinking that I have to be more entertaining than an entire convention to be worth talking to is perhaps an unhealthy mindset, but it was my first time being put in this situation, and I didn't know how to handle it. And then I brought binders full of the covers from Transformers boxes that I've cut out, and some markers so that way if you wanted I could give you guys autographs or something. But I left the binders in the car because they were heavy, not thinking the problem that would cause if people wanted the autographs, and I forgot the pens in the car too, so it never even crossed my mind to offer them when I was out there on the floor. And then there were at least three people I know of who were there at the convention who I was looking for but never wound up finding before I left. Then I forgot to try and do a fan meetup before I left. I just bailed. Though, to be fair to myself on that one, I didn't have a good way to set one up. It's not like there was a Discord group for it or something. I would have just had to have tweeted about it and hoped that people saw that while at the convention. Then, amazingly, I managed to embarrass Vangelis, the guy I most credit with being my inspiration for starting YouTube. Yeah, in one of the few actually good conversations I managed to have with my fans, Vangelis just happened to walk through the middle of it, and I was the only one who noticed. So I just went and said, well, that was Vangelis who just walked through us, with my intent being like, well, that was pretty cool, right? And then he heard that and turned around and was clearly taken aback, being like, oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just looking for, like, two other people. He seemed pretty uncomfortable, and I was just like, god damn it, how many people am I going to embarrass here? So yeah, I feel like I failed my fans pretty damn hard. To be fair to myself again, this was my first experience with this, and I clearly was not prepared. Next time, I think it will go much better. At least I damn well hope so. It could scarcely be much worse. And then also, to be fair, it could be the experience was much better for you than me. I was just sitting there, bundled up in my neuroses, desperately critiquing myself, thinking about how I was unworthy and a failure, and from your guys' point of view, you just got to meet the funny internet. Internet man. You know, the one who yells the mean words at the toys? I can see how that may have been a good experience for you, considering that you didn't have to suffer through the existential dread that was running between my ears. But to all the fans who I met that day, I desperately wish I talked to you more. I wish I took better pictures with you. I wish I signed stuff for you. I wish that I gave you a story more than I met Perspective End. Because I wish that story could have been I met Perspective End and it was awesome. I know I'm being ridiculous, but I just want to make you guys happy. And it's not good enough that I make you a little bit happy. I want you to be the most happy possible. Oh, I also screwed up the convention in other ways too. Yeah, so like, I spent more than half my time there thinking that the dealer room was the whole thing. 
Again, to be fair to myself, the convention sucked at sign postage. For instance, I had no idea the panel room was in another building. I had no idea I was even allowed in that building. I had no idea that I had to walk through a yet third building and through a pool area to find it. When I noticed that other convention goers were walking into that building, I followed them and I didn't know where I was headed. So ultimately, I wound up missing all but the single most inconsequential panel at the whole convention, the third party showcase, which was just a thing where they showed off basically 100% figures that I'd already seen online. The only thing that was new to me there was that they finally had pictures of the fully revealed MMC Devastator, with nothing blurred out, and that was kind of the height of the hype that I got to experience while at TFCon. To be honest, it was pretty cool to see that, though. Oh, also, I was only at TFCon for five hours, but I wound up spending six in traffic. Yeah, so I woke up at, like, 6 a.m., we left at 10, which was a bad idea, got to the convention at, like, 12.30, left at 5.30, and got home at, like, 8.50 or something like that, which at that point, I was basically passing out in the car. So it was probably a good idea to leave when we did, even if it means we saw, like, none of the convention, and didn't even do the fan meetup, because we were both just exhausted. However, that did mean that we missed the animated deleted scene showcase, which kind of really sucked to not experience, Though, I guess that stuff's just on YouTube now. Oh, and I didn't get any signatures. At all. I basically showed up to my first convention, and I did none of the convention stuff. David K. was right there, and I didn't even try because his line was too long. My brother got Neil Ross's signature, and Ron Friedman's, along with Ron Friedman's book, and that was pretty cool for him, because Springer is his favorite Transformers character, and normally he's a really cool-headed dude. But he turned to me after getting Neil Ross's signature and just told me, I, I didn't think I would be, but... I, I was shook. I couldn't say anything. So it was cool to see my little bro that way for once, because that was a first for me, and I know it meant a lot to him. He did suffer a bit of disappointment with Ron Friedman, though. Not Mr. Friedman's fault at all, it's just that my brother has had this theory for years, because he's a bigger fantasy nerd than me, that what with the way that in the 86 movie Wheelie just shows up out of the wilds and speaks in rhyme, that he must have been some kind of reference to Faye, like a changeling, or some kind of an elf or something. And he wanted to know if that was the actual intent, and Ron Friedman's answer was just that he made Wheelie the way that he was ordered to make him, and that it wasn't his decision at all. So that was a little anticlimactic and heartbreaking for him, but what can you do? Anyways, I'm pretty happy with my haul from TFCon. I was desperately searching for a legacy Tigerhawk my entire time there, but unfortunately, not only did no one have one, but most of the bastards there didn't even know what I was talking about when I asked. They were like, who's Tigerhawk again? And I'd have to explain it, and they'd go, oh, that weird thing from Legacy. God damn it, Beast Wars deserves more respect in this fandom. Stop sleeping on the best written show we've ever gotten to the point where you don't even recognize the characters who were in actual episodes and weren't just in the toy line. Anyways, yeah, I didn't get the one thing that I was looking for, but I did grab that incomplete Waspinator. Sadly, I never did find the final wing or the gun. I got a Transmetal Optimus Primal, and boy, having this again just makes me happy. Though, he was missing one of his knee pads, which I didn't notice when I bought it, though it was only 20 bucks. So I gave it one off of a HORRIBLE knockoff that I bought on Amazon. I think it's barely noticeable. And it was missing its gun, too. I'm cool with that, though. I got a still carded injector, who was my favorite of the fusers growing up. Card has seen better days, but hey. I got a hunt for the Decepticon's highbrow. I kind of wish I'd gotten the Obsidian Botcon retool instead, but that was like five times more expensive. This is a great plane mode, though I do think it's hilarious that this is a World War II plane with guns mounted on the wings that wouldn't be invented for like 40 years and would be quite possibly the worst things that you can mount behind a propeller. Because you can't exactly hook them up to timing gears, and if you could, you are going to be throwing a lot of ammo in the trash every time the blades pass in front of the gun. Because miniguns don't exactly stop ejecting cases because you aren't firing. Gun nerd talk aside, this is just a silly and fun toy. Then I got the toy version of the New Age Sludge, which is both the only version of this that I would have considered getting, and the one that I feel most guilty for buying. And lastly, I got to make amends to TG Ping for posting his art on Twitter once without crediting him, because I thought it looked cool, and I didn't stop to think for a second how it might be best to let people know who actually made it by buying three of his prints. It was funny because he had buy two, get one free mounted everywhere on his stall, and then I bought three, not thinking about that, and I tried to hand him 60 bucks. And while clearly I've always liked his art considering I once posted it to Twitter, but these look so much cooler when printed out, it's almost shocking. Though sadly, I did fuck this one up with a knife when I tried to lay it down, and now when I look at it, all I can see is that the damn edge isn't straight. I just want it to be a flat line, I want them straight, I want them touching each other, I want there to be no white that I can see between the two of them. OCD man, away! Anyways, yeah, my first convention was kind of an unmitigated decision. Disaster. But at the same time, it gives me hope for the next one. I can learn from my mistakes. I have the capacity. I now know that the convention won't be housed in just one building necessarily. I know that I probably need to set up the ability to more quickly and directly contact my fans. I know that I need to bring the pens with me into the building. And I now know that I probably should look up the convention schedule rather than just showing up with a smile on my face and nothing between my ears. And hopefully I won't get really sick immediately afterwards too next time. Because let me tell you, last week I basically spent entirely as a zombie. But that's not half of the emotional devastation I have wreaked upon myself. But it's enough of the emotional devastation. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.